because amongst the Shia communities of a certain mindset who have failed to understand the true message of Islam, what the Ahlul Bayt stand for, what is the significance and the importance of the coming of the Mahdi and the role he plays in the evolution of human beings, because of which their reaction will be very predictable. For example, one reaction that we can imagine is that today is the day of Ashura, we should not be engaging in anything political. Today we should only be crying for Imam Hussein. So let's not listen to what this man has to say until tomorrow. Which will be very ironic, isn't it? Because the Imam has come primarily, one of, his thing, one of the things he represents is the avenging the murder of his grandfather, Imam Hussein a.s. This is a big part of the return of the Imam and his revolution. And because of that attitude and that mindset, there are individuals who will lose out on one of the greatest blessings that they could have ever uh, imagined. So there is a certain mindset, there is a certain thought process, and this is something that I have talked about again and again in all the years that I have preached here and elsewhere. That our failing and our swaying towards extremism either way, either in lacking in catching up with Ahlul Bayt or exceeding and going overboard is primarily because we love the Ahlul Bayt we want their fada'il, we remember them and recite their masa'id, which is all very good, but we do not understand how they think. Not that we can understand at their level of thought, but what I mean is they have a certain akhlaq, they have a certain value system, they have a certain code of ethics and morals, which you will only understand if you read their ahadith, if you read not just their fadail and masaib, but their teachings, and begin, we begin practicing what they, uh, what they have encouraged us to practice. It is only when we do that, then our values and our ethics and our morals and our thought process begins to align with theirs. And then we begin to think the way they think within our capacity. It is only then that we relate to them in the real sense. So we're not waiting for some superhuman who is not really the person who is coming. He may be superhuman in different ways. For example, he may be the greatest teacher of Tawheed in the world. But we are waiting for somebody who is going to show us certain types of miracles, yet we have no concern about knowing God, for example. So this will also be something that we will talk about, inshallah.